Okay, sketching these graphs, um, were you listening uh, last summer when you met the, the number E? E is the number 2.71828, that one there. Okay, uh, and y equals e to the x is a really interesting function because it's its own gradient. Okay, but to sketch the graph of y equals e to the x, you don't really need to know all of that. You just need to know that e is a number bigger than 1, and just like 2 to the x, uh, e to the power of naught, anything to the power of naught is 1. So on the graph of e to the x, it's going to go through um, point naught 1, because when x is naught, y is 1. And when x is 1, y is going to equal e to the power of 1, which is going to be e, which is up here. And then when y is 2, we're going to get e squared, which is even higher up. So as we go up through the powers, uh, e to the x gets rapidly very, very big. And then the corresponding negative powers, remember a negative power causes 1 overness. So e to the power minus 1 is 1 over e, which is down here. And e to the power of minus 2 is closer to naught. And it gets very close to naught very quickly, but it never reaches naught. So we say that the x-axis here, the line y equals naught, is an asymptote. So that's a graph of y equals e to the x. It looks quite a lot like y equals 2 to the x. Now this other function, y equals ln of x, okay, or, or y equals log to the base e of x, um, what does y equal um, log to the base e of x mean? Well, you know about uh, ordinary logs, um, you know that 2 cubed equals 8, so as a log that same statement becomes log to the base 2 of 8 equals 3. So that's the concrete example of what logs do. So um, doing the similar equivalent here, okay, so I want um, to turn a log statement, log to the base e of x equals y into powers. So log to the base 2 of 8, well the 2, the e, that's the number I'm going to be doing a power of, okay, and then the number inside the log is the answer to the power statement, so that means uh, x goes here, and then um, the number that I use as the power is the answer to the log statement, so x equals e to the power of y. So we can see that uh, if y is log to the base e of x, then I've got x equals e to the power of y, which is the same as this, but with x and y swapped around. So if I want to know what the graph of y equals log to the ba base e of x looks like, that's equivalent to this graph, which is this graph with x and y swapped around. So for every point on the original graph, I'm going to get a similar point. So this is the point naught 1. On the log graph, I'm going to get the point 1 naught because x and y swap around. Okay, so this would be the point with x coordinate um, 1 and y coordinate e. Well, I'm going to get the opposite of that. I'm going to get x coordinate of e and y coordinate of 1 here on this graph. Um, here, where I've got a point uh, very, very close to the x-axis, it's going to come down here and be a point very, very close to the y-axis. So the graph of y equals log to base e of x, which you should have done last summer anyway, looks like this. Because for every point on the, the e graph, y equals e to the x, uh, it's x and y coordinates swap round to get um, the co corresponding point on the y equals log x graph. Okay, and because the x-axis is an asymptote, okay, this was y equals naught, was an asymptote of the graph y equals e to the x, the y-axis is going to be an asymptote of this graph. Okay, this one is y equals log to the base e of x, this one was y equals e to the power of x. And this situation where one function is uh, the same as the other but with the inputs and outputs swapped, okay, is the relationship between a function, this is the original function, and this is its inverse function. So you get a similar kind of situation happening if you go from x squared to the square root of x, that's another inverse function relationship. Okay, so we've done what the question asked us to do, which is to sketch the graphs y equals e to the x and y equals log x. Um, but the relationship between these two graphs is a transformation. So what transformation swaps over my x and y coordinates? Well, what I'm doing is I'm hopping from up here, there to down here. I'm hopping to the other side of this diagonal line here. Okay, so this is y equals x is the dotted line. Okay, and so if I ever go from a function f of x, okay, to um, its, so y equals f of x, I should say, to the graph of its inverse function, y equals f inverse of x, okay, the transformation for that is a reflection in the line y equals x. So you need to learn this transformation, reflection in the line y equals x, and the reason why that happens is that x and y values change places. 
So that means that for an individual point, its coordinates, instead of being an x and a y, those same two numbers are used as a y and an x, which is why we get a corresponding point down here. Oh, and the last thing we need to do is we need to label the important points on these graphs, and you always label an intercept if you've got one. So we said that on the e to the x graph, when x is uh, naught, y is 1, so this is the point naught 1, and so on the log graph, which is a reflection of that, this is the point 1 naught. So the fact that y is 1 here and x is 1 there is something that you should always show on your graph.